All right, Triggers, what's happening? So, I actually wasn't going to bring you any more videos this week until I went to the WrestleFall show and done the Whitem show. But with the breaking news that there has been, with WWE releasing some superstars, I've had to bring you a video on this, just because I'm not happy with some of the people that have been released. Now, some of you might think, well, to be honest with you, we've not seen him for a while, so it's kind of good, get him off the wage bill. More talent's coming through is half decent. I would agree with you on some aspects on that, We'll go through the list now. I'll talk to you about who I think won't be missed up to I think that they've dropped a bollock on it. So eight superstars have actually been released today. And it is a shame because, in theory, they've lost their jobs. Now, I know it's not nice when someone loses their job. But let's be honest, they're not going to be skint of a few bob now, are they? Unless they've got really bad gambling problems, then maybe they are, I guess. I don't know. But... Let's just start with who I think won't be missed, and then, like I said, leading up to the ones who I think that they've fucked up on, and I'm actually personally pissed off with that they've let them go. So, Hornswoggle, not been seen for a long time. The storyline about him being Vince McMahon's bastard child, but then turned out to be Finley's child. I mean, he had his chance at the Cruiserweight Championship. He's not been seen for a while. I guess it was probably time that they did let him go, and then we can move on from there, really. So next up, I'd say, would be El Torito. Now, he's not been seen for a long time, even after Los Matadoras were still continuing. And they've not actually disappeared. They're kind of coming back as a different tag name now. But El Torito, again, a bit like Hornswoggle, they had a bit of a, a feud, you know, a couple of years back now. It was funny at the time, but now, again, El Torito, he's moved on. And I don't think he will be missed, if being honest with you. So I say it's a shame when people do lose their jobs, and it is really, because like I say, that's their income. But then I go and say they won't be missed. But let's be honest, they haven't been in a storyline for a long time, so in the storyline aspect of WWE, they will not be missed. Next up, we'll go with Cameron. Now again, Cameron's not been seen for a while. I thought she was good in the Funkadactyls, but then she went on a solo run, but then disappeared, but... I'm not too sure what happened here, because from what I read, she left to focus on her music career. But then I read somewhere else that she dropped down, like Eva, Eva Mendes, to try and build up her reputation again in NXT. But again, she's not been seen. But I don't think this helped her. It might have been on the cards anyway, when she's praised Ryback for him saying that he's had enough of WWE as well. And I'll get on to Ryback later on as well. So again, Cameron, but she was on the, the version of... Tough enough, very, very early stages when Stone Cold Steve Austin was hosting it. She was on one of them, if you remember. She did get eliminated quite early on, but still, it shows that WWE signed her from her audition tapes. And she even said, I will sign for WWE. And she was confident enough to believe in herself that they did. Unfortunately, she's now been released, but I'd say she won't really be that missed that much because there wasn't much of a storyline. So it is, girl, bye. Did I do that a little bit too well? Never mind. So next up, we'll go with Santino Marrera. Now, let's be honest. He is a fucking character and a half. And a, a, a fan favourite. Everyone loved him. I loved him as well. But again, about three, four years ago, he actually retired due to a broken neck. But then came back from retirement. And I'm thinking, how the fuck can you come back from a broken neck? Obviously, it might not have been as serious as they first thought. And I think, but again, he's not been seen since, you know, retiring from this broken neck incident. Is a character that will be missed because we need more characters like him. Now, you can mention Goldust and R-Truth. I will get onto them later on. I don't really think that they're in kind of the same category. But, you know, Santino, he will be missed, I personally think. Just because of his character-wise, more than his wrestling ability. And let's be honest, no one's ever going to forget the fact that Vince McMahon picked him out of the crowd in Milan to face Umanga and then win the Intercontinental Championship on his debut. You know what I mean? Everyone's probably thinking, wow, this guy, he's just been picked out of crap. Obviously, it's all stage and everything, but he gave people like me a chance thinking, I've still got it. I've got it. Any any moment now, as soon as I go to a WWE show, they're going to pick me. Oh, I'm sitting in the, in the stadium. I've got me boots. Pick me, boss. I'm ready to go in. Yeah, that was never really going to fucking happen, let's be honest. So next we come to Alex Riley. Now, he's been out with a long-term injury, so you can kind of look that WWE are trying to save money in that way. But then WWE have stuck by wrestlers when they've been out for a long time. Darren Young, perfect example, was out for like 9, 10 months. Stuck by him, and there's rumours that they're trying to give him a big push. I mean, 
I'm not, I'm not saying just get rid of them because they're injured, because let's be honest, there is a lot of talent in a person's ability, but just because they've been released now, don't mean that they can't be re-signed, because a few of these wrestlers have been released and been re-signed again, so I guess they can say it's a new chapter in their life, like some of them have already said on Twitter, but... I think they're just trying to, you know, keep their chin up and, and, you know, try and not be so damn. But Alex Riley, again, this one's a hard one to call because he has been out injured for a very long time. I guess WWE are just looking at it in that way. So now it brings me to Zeb Coulter. Now, he's been in WWE for a very long time. In it and out, in it and out, in it and out. You know, like on and off, on and off relationships, so to speak. Now, I thought him as the manager with the real Americans of Jack Swagger and Cesaro, they were good. And obviously, Cesaro split up with Whitney's own path. And then Jack Swagger's kind of faded away a bit. Then Zeb Coulter disappeared. Then he came back with Alberto Del Rio. And he was on an electric scooter. Now, I don't know if they've done this due to his health reasons, medical reasons. I'm not too sure because he was away for a while which they you know probably helped him a bit you know to get a bit more um, recovery and then he does, then he comes back which is great to see and he's on an electric scooter so maybe he's not too stable on his legs anymore so again they're probably looking at it as in an aspect of medical reasons but then Alberto Rio did turn on Zeb Coulter and then went on his own and that was the end of Zeb Coulter and we've not seen him since so maybe it is medical reasons or maybe there is genuinely no storyline for him so now let's talk about Damien Sandow now WWE have fucked up on here I personally think now a lot of you might think well hang on a second he's been nowhere he's a jobby he was okay in Mizdow but nothing. Now, if you recall, a few years ago, they gave him a Money in the Bank. He actually won Money in the Bank. He lost it against John Cena, and he was the first wrestler to ever fail in cashing in his Money in the Bank. Now, I don't know why they gave him the Money in the Bank to only lose it. Because he was the only one who lost it up till that point. Now... When I say that, I think that they fucked up. They've not used him in the best way. A few years back, they was making him as a joke wrestler, coming out in all these gimmick costumes coming out as a basketball player LeBron James and fucking Magneto from X-Men and I'm just thinking what have you done to this guy I mean I did feel sorry for him but I also said I said to myself that he needs to have a bit more respect and say this is degrading I am fucking not doing this it is a joke now fair enough you take one for the team he's doing it for his job you know to get money and everything they haven't used him to his best ability. We, as the WWE fans, want Damian Sandow. We chant his name all the time. He says it on Twitter. Chant it on Monday Night Raw. Let the universe know. Let WWE know. But let's be honest. WWE don't give a shit, do they? They think that they know what's best. It's their way or fuck off on your own way. And it winds us up. But then mugs like us, and I conclude myself in that, continue to watch it, continue to spend money on it. And the problem is, is because they know they haven't really got any other competition, they can fucking do what they want. They can bend us over as much as they want, and we will take it. But there'll be a time where we'll just fucking get too annoyed and probably go, do you know what, bollocks to this. Now, that's why I think they're trying to go back or turn into the PG-13 rating, because the PG rating, people's getting young. Now you've got Stephanie McMahon and Shane McMahon, Graham Harsey's on Monday Night Raw. I don't know what's happening there. Maybe it's the storyline to build up to the brand switch, which would be great. One does Monday, one does, um, you know, the Tuesday or SmackDown shows. It would be good. That needs to happen. But I think WWE have not used Damian Sandow to his full extent. But let's be honest, he gets a lot of reaction from the crowd. Even when it was Mizdow, we all chanted for Mizdow more than we wanted the Miz. And that's my dog in the corner there, <laughs> so, you know, he's just saying hello. So the last superstar that I need to talk about is Wade Barrett, King Barrett. Now, we knew it was coming months ago, so it's not a great shock to us, but we're still pissed off. And I'm pissed off being an Englishman. We have never seen a WWE heavyweight champion in WWE, obviously. Now, they fucked up with the British Bulldog. How he never got the championship is beyond me. I do not know. How Wade Barrett didn't get given a push towards it, again, I never know. I think in 2010, his first proper year in there, he went up against Randy Orton in a pay-per-view and lost it, but he had no other chance other than that. Yes, he's won a few Intercontinental Championships, but that's fucking bullshit compared to the Heavyweight Championship. Now, the Irish have had a few, why can't the English? I don't understand what it is. Now, you gave Wade Barrett king in a ring. Was that just to keep him sweet? Because you knew he wasn't happy? He wasn't going to sign a contract? Oh, we'll give him that. He'll keep it sweet. 
You do realise that King of the Ring means fuck all nowadays, right? It was something back a few years ago when there wasn't as much on the tables now, but the King of the Ring means absolutely fuck all. And the fact that you had two Englishmen in the final, fair enough, so we was going to have an Englishman who was going to win it, either Wade Barrett or Neville, but it means fuck all. I hope they don't do the same with Neville because this geezer's got a lot of talent. Unfortunately, he's that injured at the moment. I don't think he's that good on the microphone. Being a Geordie, I think the Yanks will find it hard to understand him. So maybe he needs a manager, maybe like Paul Heyman or someone like that. I don't know, but all I know is Neville needs a big push when he comes back. He has to have get. He needs a big push. So that's obviously all the superstars that got released today, which is a shame. Now, I just want to talk about some of the superstars that are still with WWE that technically should be released before the likes of Wade Barrett and Damian Sandan, at least. Now, R-Truth, let's be honest. I know I've said in a few videos that I think R-Truth and Goldust would be a good tag team and it would be co quite comical. But if you're talking individual, R-Truth don't cut it. He has had a lot of matches... And he's lost more than he's won. Let's be honest. He's lost more matches than I've had hot dinners. And I've had a fucking lot of hot dinners. I'll tell you that now. Bo Dallas, I have to say as well. I know I've done the Bo train in some of my videos and it is a laugh. But this guy in NXT was a champion for God knows how many days. Now, he is a joke. He is. I know it's funny as the social outcast, but now with Adam Rose being on you know suspension regarding a medical drugs test or whatever i don't know where the game is going he came in as a solo started winning and then all of a sudden he's just disappeared and now he's in the social outcast and he's a bit of a job it's a bit like heath slater you know and curtis axel i don't get it i don't know i don't understand why these guys are still here because i personally don't think that they bring anything yeah the social outcasts are a bit funny now so i'm contradicting myself but again if we're talking individuals let's be honest heath slater in free you know free man band i don't think that they were that great either you know you could argue yeah it was comical blah 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 it wasn't that great and as a solo it's not that great curtis axel his old man's a legend but it doesn't mean that you have to be loyal to someone just because that dad was a legend. It just seems like no matter what we say, what we voice, we're just pawns in this and no one listens to the pawn. Like in chess, the pawns go first and get fucked over, don't they? And us, that I think like we are, we don't have a voice no matter what. It's all them going, well, without the universe and you fans, we would be nothing. Well, that's bollocks because you'd fucking still have people. Even if you had no one there, you'd still do it your way no matter what. Now, it's the same with The Rock. As much as The Rock is a legend and people love him, WWE seem to think that if they bring him back once or twice in a year, it's okay. They've saved the day. Bring him back for WrestleMania. It's been done time and time and time again. It's fucking boring. It was great at WrestleMania 30 because it was 30 years. You can't keep bringing all these superstars back. Yeah, they get a lot of reaction and it is great seeing them. But you need to move forward because you're constantly going backwards. And it just shows that you don't technically have confidence in yourself anymore. You have to bring old superstars back to give you a kick. Now, if that's telling you something, either you're not signing the right people or you need to start getting into work on their charisma a bit more. So that's all I have to say on this matter, actually. I could go on a little bit longer, but it's only meant to be a quick video. But let me know in the comments below if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, if there's anyone there who you think that should go. I'm always willing to read them, so don't forget to like, subscribe, leave any comments below. Follow me on Twitter, it's in the description. Like I said, I'll be in Whitton tomorrow for a wrestleful show. Hopefully I can get you a video up on Sunday, because... It's my birthday next Thursday, so I'm not planning on doing anything around that time. Because on Wednesday, I'm going to see Busted. Yes, I'm going to see Busted. I said it. I've talked about Busted in a WWE show. What are you going to do about it? It's my show. What are you going to do? Please don't unsubscribe. Please? No, but honestly, I am going to Busted. Look, I grew up watching, I grew up listening to them. They're a great band. I love them. And I never actually saw them when they was around. So it would be good to see what they're like. But yeah, like I said, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave any comments below. Follow me on Twitter, it's in the description. So until next time, I will see you later!